I want to show you how you can construct a Monte Carlo simulation of retirement withdrawals in Excel. So if you've taken an intro finance class, you may have done the type of problem where we give you a certain amount of money that you at retirement and we ask you how much money can you take out for the 30 years you're retired. And it's actually quite an easy problem to solve because you know the number of years that uh, you'll be retired and you know the interest rate um, for all 30 years. Now in reality it doesn't work that way. First you don't really know how long you'll live. right? Maybe everyone in your family passed away at uh, 85 but that doesn't mean you won't make it to 90 or 95 or 100 and so you really don't want to run out of money. Number two your average return might be, for example, 10%, but you're not going to get 10% every year for 30 years. You might get 15% one year, you might get minus 5% another year, you might get 0%, you might get plus 20%. It'll be all over the place. So what you'd like to do is understand um, how your retirement savings hold up over this the number of years you're retired um, under different conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct this Monte Carlo simulation where we replicate um, or randomly determine interest rates and inflation rates to see how things work out. So let's look at an example here. Suppose you start with a million dollars in your account when you're retired. And let's assume you withdraw 4% um, each year, and then you're going to adjust that by the inflation rate. So why did I pick 4%? You may have heard 4% um, mentioned. It's become this rule of thumb. Well, it's attributed to William Bengen, who in 1994 was a financial advisor, and he published a paper in the Journal of Financial Planning. He wanted to understand um, the impact of different withdrawal rates on how much money a retiree had. And at the time, I believe the, the um, standard practice was to take out 5%. So what he did is he collected data on stock returns, bond returns, and the inflation rate from 1926 to 1994. And he actually extrapolated for two more years. So he had 70 years of data, actual data. And what he did is he looked at, you know, different, different allocations, for example, 70% bonds, 30, I'm sorry, 70% stock, 30% bonds, 50% stock, 50% bonds, etc., and different withdrawal rates. And he looked to see how long the money lasted. And what he found was, and he used actual data, so he looked at somebody who started withdrawing in 1926 and got the 1926 return that year, and 19, the returns in 1927, etc. And this includes the Great Depression, you know, which included a stock market crash, other periods where the uh, stock market did exceptionally well. So this is real world data. And what he found is, as you've you withdrew as little as 3%, you would, it would last for at least 50 years. Okay? In no case did anybody run out of money in 50 years. But 3% seems like a fairly small amount to take out. I mean, you'd like to take out enough to live comfortably. He tried 5%. The problem with 5% is quite often you ran out of money okay? in less than 30 years. And then he tried 4%, and 4% lasted for 50 years quite a lot of the time, but I believe was never less than 30 years. So he said, you know, this is probably a reasonable number to use. So we want to do this, and rather than use real data, we're going to use a Monte Carlo simulation, where we're going to, you know, try this. We're going to, you know, change the interest rate randomly, we're going to change the inflation rate randomly, and then we're going to see how things work out. So let's look at the example. You got a million bucks, it's a 4% withdrawal rate. We're going to assume that the average return is 6% with a standard deviation of 9%. Okay. 
So if you're taking out 4% of a million, your first year withdrawal is going to be 40,000. Let's assume that the inflation rate or the average inflation rate is two and a half percent. Okay, as I'm making this video during the um, aftermath of the global pandemic, we have inflation that's running quite a bit higher than two and a half percent, but the Fed has tried to maintain an inflation rate of around two percent. The reason it's so high now is there have been a lot of supply chain issues or a lot of shortages. There was a lot of pandemic money uh, that was out there. Also, the Federal Reserve provided a lot of stimulus to keep the economy from um, falling into a recession. So inflation's running quite high right now. But they try and aim for 2%. And let's assume that they get it back there, you know, sometime in the not too distant future. And so I'm going to say 2.5% for the inflation rate, 1.5% standard deviation. So how are we going to look at this? What I've done is I've constructed essentially an amortization table. So you may be familiar with these in looking at how a loan balance is paid off, like a mortgage or a car loan. You start with a beginning balance, you make a certain payment, um, you pay a certain amount of interest, and of that payment, some of it goes to paying interest and some goes to principal, and then you have an ending balance. So very similar here. So we have a beginning balance of a million, our return in this period happens to be 13.93%. We said the average was 6%, but the standard deviation was 9%. So it's going to fluctuate. If you recall from stats class, something like 67% of the values fall um, between plus and minus one standard deviation of the average. Something like 95% plus or minus two standard deviations, etc. So sometimes it's going to be way higher than 6%. Sometimes it's going to be way lower, like minus 14.71%. So it's going to fluctuate. Sometimes it's going to be close to 6%, but it's going to jump around. So what are your earnings? Your earnings are the beginning balance times the return. So you earn about 139000 here. The inflation rate is the same. And how did we calculate these two? We use the Excel function norm inverse rand um, open parenthesis closed parenthesis mean and standard deviation. So this function generates a value based on the mean and the standard deviation and this rand generates a random variable so we get different numbers here. Okay, generates a number between 0 and 1 I believe. Okay, so we put in if you look here we put in the mean value for the average return, we put in the standard deviation, okay, and then we copy it down and it generates different returns. It also generates different inflation rates. What's the ending balance? It's going to be the beginning balance plus any earnings minus the amount you withdraw. We said you're going to take 40,000 out the first year and you get an ending balance. What's the ending balance turn out to be? It turns out to be the beginning balance for the next period and we do it again. Now what's different here? The amount you withdraw. What I'm going to assume is that you withdraw the amount you withdrew, withdrew the previous period adjusted for inflation. You don't know what the inflation rate is going to be this year but you knew what it was last year. So you said, look, it was 0.85% last year. I'm going to adjust my withdrawals by that amount. Right? That's the way Social Security works. They adjust the, the uh, benefits by the inflation rate, but they don't know what you know this year's inflation rate is going to be. They adjust it by what last year's inflation rate is. And so you can see that we get these different values. And you can see that by the end of 30 years, you're taking out quite a bit more than you took out in year one. Now, the beauty of this is you can keep changing this by, for example, hitting the F9 function. I can't do this in Excel or, uh, right now because the software I'm using to record this doesn't allow me to use the F9 key. If you can't, you can use this button here, which calculates, recalculates now. So if I hit it, you'll notice the numbers changed. What do I have here? Right here, this turns out to be the year um, 30 ending value. 
Notice that it's negative. Ooh, not good, right? Well, let me recalculate again. Okay, really negative. Okay, okay. Positive, 272, almost 273,000, right? I keep replicating, okay, over a million in year 30, right? So how much money you have in year 30 is going to be random, even if you generate a 6% return. So what I did over here is I've created some descriptive statistics, and what I've done is I've replicated this a thousand times. Now I could scroll down, but rather than just hit this button a thousand times and write down what value came out, I'm going to let this replicate this a thousand times. That's what a Monte Carlo simulation does. It's going to do it a bunch of times. And you can see, you know, in this case, you know, when one case you have about a little over one and a half million, here you have less than 200,000, here you have over three million, here you have over two million, right? There are cases where you're negative, et cetera, et cetera. So we do it a bunch of times. Why do we do that? Because the more times we do it, the more accurate we get. It's like flipping a coin. If you flip a coin 10 times, are you going to get 50% heads and 50% tails? That is five heads and five tails? Maybe, but you might get seven heads and three tails. Okay? Or you might get six and four, or you might get eight and two. But if you flip it a thousand times, you're probably going to be pretty close to 50-50. If you flip it 10,000 times, you'll probably be even closer, assuming it's a fair coin. And the same thing here. I did it a thousand times, but we could do it 10,000 times or 100,000 times. Okay, this is, this is what we do in a replication. So what I've done here is I've calculated, so these are all the ending values in year 30, and it's, there's going to be a thousand of them. I have the average of those. Okay, so we just add up all the thousand and divide by a thousand. Here we have the median of those thousand values, the middle score, half the values above, half the values below. Okay, 10% of the time you're going to be below 110,000. 25% of the time you're going to be below 405,000. Okay, and I put the minimum and the maximum values of these thousand and the percentage of times that you're less than zero. That's what we really care about, running out of money. All right, and we can keep replicating this. And if we keep replicating, it looks like, you know, 15, 16% of the time, you're going to be negative. All right, so maybe 4% is too much to take out. In fact, let's try 3.5%. This is the beauty of setting up your own spreadsheet. I will, in a minute, show you how to create this table. But let me just do a couple of adjustments here, or, or make some changes. Suppose you only take out 3.5%, okay? Now, looks better, right? Looks like you're, I don't know, 93, 94% of the time you're going to have not run out of money. In fact, you may have seen some financial planners, if you read uh, you know, some financial advice. Some of them are saying, take out 3.5% now. Interest rates are pretty low. You probably should be withdrawing a little bit less. What if you wanted to take out 5%? You know, I really need more money in retirement. Oh, not so good. You know, 40-some 40, 40 percent of the time, you're going to run out of money before year 30. So even if you predicted correctly that you're going to live for exactly 30 years, you're going to run out of money. Can we do a little better here? What if we can maybe change our allocation here so we earn a little higher return? What if we could earn 7.5% instead of 6%? Well, this makes it a little bit better, right? Now, looks like better than 80% of the time um, we'll have money at the end of year 30. So. This is the nice thing about this is you can make adjustments to this. You can change the inflation rate. You can change the standard deviation of the inflation rate, etc. Um, there are a lot of financial calculators, retirement calculators online, but the problem with them is you don't exactly know what they're doing. They may have some footnotes to tell you how they do some of the calculations, but here this is a lot better. You can figure it out for yourself and try different values and try and figure out what's the optimal um, or the safest amount to take out when you retire. 
All right, let me show you how to create this table that does it a thousand times. So I've just copied everything over here, the amounts, okay, and this amortization table. And this is, again, the year 30 amount. And so I have this table here, and I could scroll all the way down, but take my word for it. It goes down to 1,000, and this is the same value as it is here. So you can, you know, again, you don't have to type in a thousand here, but if you don't know, you don't know how many replications you did, you could just type a couple numbers and drag and drop it down there. Or you can also use a fill format. For example, you can use this right here and say you have a series, okay, the value was one, right? We're doing it in the column. This first, it's going to go up by one. And what's the stop value? You know, I would type a thousand in here. I've already done that, so we don't need to do that. Okay, so how do you construct this table? All right, well, the first thing you want to do, oops, first thing you want to do is highlight the entire table. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to hit Control Shift Down key, and so you can see that I've covered a thousand rep, uh, replications. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the data tab and the what if analysis. And we're going to create a data table. We're not actually creating a data table, we're just using it to do the calculation. There's no row input, so just leave it blank. The column input turns out that you just simply want to highlight a blank cell. And the reason you do that is Excel needs some place to do the calculation. So just hit Enter. And then if we hit OK, it populates this entire thing Okay, with a 1,000 replications. Let me turn these into dollar signs so that we can, it's a little easier to see. So dollars, and let me uh, reduce the decimal places. We don't care about the pennies. And up here, again, we see these values. So this is what I created before. And again, just like I did before, you can change some of these numbers here, see how um, different withdrawal rates and different um, assumptions on return and standard deviations and inflation rates impact um, how well you do. I mean, ideally, you do not want to run out of money in year 30 unless, you know, if you're 80 years old and you're aiming for 30 years, you're probably pretty safe. But if you retire at, you know, 55 and you're aiming for 30 years, you know, you may be around after year 85, even though in the past most of your family didn't make it that far, right? You know, medicine's gotten a lot better, okay? You may just be lucky and you may live to be 100. So you want to make sure that, you know, you have money that lasts long enough. And this is a great way to do it. It's quite simple to do and, um, you know, easy to construct. And I hope you found this helpful.